um, to my colleagues to introduce themselves. Before we get into everything, we want you guys to know a little bit about us. Awesome. I can kick us off. Hello, everybody. I know I see at least a few familiar faces or names on the line. Uh, my name is Bryn Bogan. I am the Vice President of District Support at Commonlet. Uh, and over the, especially the past three school years, I've had the opportunity to work with the Tucson team quite closely. Uh, so I'm excited to share more about Commonlet today. And with that, I'll hand things over to Sasha, my colleague. Hi, everyone. Um, also just thrilled to be here. My name is Sasha. I'm the Associate Director of District Success here at Commonlet. Um, I've worked closely with the Tucson team, but honestly, I love just being in this role because I'm actually a former high school English teacher myself. So excited to be here and to continue to collaborate with your team. I'm going to pass things over to my colleague, Monica, who's been working with the team this year as well. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Monica Duckles. I am a district success account specialist, and I've been supporting Tucson uh, in school year 23 24. Just like Sasha, um, I have quite a few years in the classroom, lots of experience before I came to work at Commonlet. I was an English educator for about 10 years before transitioning uh, to my current role. Amanda, take us away. Yeah, and my name is Amanda Riddle. Um, I lead our school partnerships team. Um, I've been with the team just over four years, and what I do every day is help districts like yours roll out our program in a meaningful way and connect you guys with resources. Um, actually, way back when, um, connected with Tucson first when we became partners, and we will get to that a little bit later in the presentation. So this is especially exciting for me um, to explore this option with you all. Um, and we'd love to take a moment, um, if you could return the favor, um, to introduce yourself in the chat really quickly if you are with us, just your name, if you're comfortable, your role, um, and if you're an educator or administrator, how long you've been with the district. And this one, this last piece is what we're most excited to hear about is how familiar you are with Common Lit. So I'll let everyone take a moment um, to respond in the chat. You can also respond directly to us. Danny, thanks so much for joining us today. We will talk a lot about sixth grade. <laughs> Alrighty, hello again. <laughs> awesome, I'll give everyone just a few more seconds to respond. Great. Um, we are going to, um, oh, there they all are. Oh, great. Um, Pamela, it's nice to see you. Um, and Camille, thank you so much um, for joining us. Kim as well, and Carrie, um, and everyone else. So we are going to get started. And while we just use the chat now, we are going to leave ample time at the end of this presentation for Q&A. We want to use this time to the best of your ability. Get to know us, get to know our content. You all are giving us your time. We want to give you open space to ask questions. But we are going to go through a lot. Sasha will be ma managing the chat if you have questions right in the moment, but we're going to hope that we can give you as much information as you need. And I would say in true teacher fashion, um, by the end of the presentation, we hope that you will have a strong understanding of our existing partnership with the district and where that has gotten us to this great point. Um, I want you to have a deep understanding of the Common Lit 360 curriculum, which if you remember three things, it is highly engaging for students. It is research-based and effective at um, promoting student outcomes. And it's flexible to fit your district's needs. And we are going to help you do that, we hope. Um, and at the end, we're going to give a preview of what your custom implementation plan could look like and how we plan to support your district um, specifically to roll out the curriculum. Zooming out a bit, you know us, we got to know you. Um, we'd love to tell you a little bit about our organization. Um, so CommonLit has, um, commonlit.org is made by teachers for teachers. You heard from us on the chat um, on a um, on previous slide. And we are really proud to promote a program that is um, research-based and really proven to be effective in many different ways, um, as well as used widely across the US um, and specifically in over 800 districts as a key resource um, um, in ELA, in their ELA programs. We partner with over 800 districts that are spread out everywhere across all 50 states. So we're really able to meet the needs of many different types of communities. And how do we do that? We do it with our full program. Um, and we believe that a ELA program is comprised of many things. The first is of course, something you expect, curriculum, really engaging, exciting texts that your students are 
um, thrilled to be reading, excited to talk about, and challenge them with grade level rigor. We started doing this when we um, created our website um, with our library, which many of you might know and love. It has individual texts with rigorous grade level questions, um, exciting engagement pieces, and scaffolds for all learners. We truly built upon this work um, in the last few years as we've, as we've developed our full year grade level curriculum, Common Lit 360. This is what we're gonna spend most of the time talking about today, as you guys know. Um, and I'm really excited to dive into how we believe this curriculum could be a really great fit for your team. But other folks might think that this is all you need for a great ELA program, but we at Common Lit believe that our program can provide really meaningful pieces to support that curriculum, the first being assessments. We wanna be able to provide integrative, integrated and easy to use assessments to help teachers and coaches and administrators meaningfully monitor, monitor progress. We're gonna do this in two ways and we will share more about this later on. One with our assessment series benchmarks, which are given throughout the year, and then our unit-based assessments that pair perfectly with the units in our curriculum. And then finally, we have professional learning, which is really supporting both. Um, we take serious pride in our account management and support and professional learning for coaches, for teachers, for administrators. We wanna make sure you are supported every step of the way to have a really effective implementation. We also wanna support you um, in supporting families to help their students um, do better in classroom. Um, zooming in a bit to your neighbors, um, this full program is used a lot across the state of Arizona. Um, we are really proud to have long-term partnerships throughout the state, um, in particular with Deer Valley and Tempe Union. Um, and we are just really well integrated in ELA across the state with over 7,000 teachers in 1,400 schools using it actively every week. Um, and because of that, deep partnership that we have across the state, we actually are able to align to Arizona English language art standards. So you can be sure that your teachers will be able to see those standards and track progress with their students. And now I'm going to pass the mic over to Monica to talk about one of our favorite partners in Arizona. You all. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. We currently partner with 40 schools in Tucson Unified School District. Our formal partnership has existed for three years. And over those three years, we have worked really closely with teachers, with coaches, with administrators to number one, deeply understand your district's instructional goals and needs. Number two, to find new ways for Common Lit to support ELA instruction across the district, across sixth all the way up to 12th grade. And finally, to get really creative about ways we can personalize the professional learning opportunities for your team. Now, a really strong district partnership does not come out of the blue. Uh, so we are going to tell you, we're going to take you all back to school year 2021 um, to sort of paint a picture about how this strong relationship has come to be. So way back when, school year 20 to 21, um, many of you have blocked this year out, I'm sure, teachers across the country were transitioning from a physical classroom to digital learning. And in doing so, uh, teachers were scrambling to find high quality resources to continue that instruction for students. While this was happening, teachers across Tucson found Common Lit. We did not have a formal partnership with your district at that time. And yet over 400 lessons, Common Lit lessons were assigned to students that year. So that brings us to school year 21-22. Thanks in large part because of teachers' positive experience using our resources during the pandemic. Uh, based on teacher advocacy and widespread usage, Tucson formally started a partnership with Common Lit in school year 21-22. What this looked like, uh, how this came to be, one of the things we did for you all was create a custom curriculum alignment guide to provide teachers with a clear plan for instruction. So in other words, before you all even started thinking about having a common curriculum, we were already providing resources to really seamlessly embed ourselves in your instructional plan. Bringing us to school year 22-23, I think a light bulb went off for a lot of educators and a lot of leaders across Tucson that perhaps instead of 
using our resources, picking and choosing um, some things to fit into your curriculum map, perhaps Common Lit 360, perhaps our curriculum was something that could be a good instructional fit for your district. So teachers began to explore Common Lit 360 units quite heavily. And by the end of the year, uh, we were beginning to realize that Common Lit 360 was that trusted resource, was starting to be that trusted resource for your district. So that brings us to this school year. Um, in school year 23-24, ELA teachers across Tucson have become really comfortable and familiar and are utilizing all three core parts of Common Lit's pro uh, program already. Teachers are using our curriculum and our curricular resources. Teachers are accessing our assessments and teachers are uh, voluntarily signing up for and engaging with our professional development. Getting a little bit more into the specifics, let's talk about curriculum. From the beginning of this school year, so since August of 2000, of, of the beginning of this year, we have over 400 Tucson teachers who are active on our platform. They have assigned or downloaded over 5,000 lessons, but what's more significant is that students are completing these lessons. We have over 5,000 completed student common lit assignments to date. We want you to know that this is something, there's excitement for common lit units from sixth grade all the way up to 12th grade. So the enthusiasm for common lit is not just happening at the middle school level or the high school level. Um, on this slide, we listed out some of our most popular units. We are seeing tons of enthusiasm at the middle school level, but we also wanted you to know that ninth grade teachers, 12th grade teachers, there's a lot of excitement for our units at the high school level as well. Talking a little bit about assessments, one thing that all of your educators have access to through your current partnership is uh, access to our benchmark reading assessments. While this wasn't, uh, while there was no district mandate for teachers to use the benchmark reading assessment, we were really excited to see that over 4,000 pre-assessments were assigned to students this year. So why might teachers be already reaching for this resource, even if uh, they weren't explicitly instructed to do so? We think that teachers are recognizing that utilizing this benchmark assessment is helping teachers focus their instruction on key standards. They're recognizing that this is a tool that they can use alongside our curriculum to support student growth. The final thing that we were really excited to share with you all is the excitement and engagement that is already happening with our professional development offerings for your team. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting over 150 Tucson educators so far during two of Tucson's uh, state, or excuse me, district uh, PD days. We've led three trainings. We led an overview of Common Lit's full program, we led a training that was a deep dive into Common Lit 360, which as a matter of fact, was the most popular of the three sessions. And then we led another overview uh, of Common Lit's full program for educators who were new to the district. Um, we have already been asked to set aside the next two district PD days. So we're really excited to come back and uh, see teachers again in both January and March. And I've been working with the team to make sure that the professional development offerings we are offering on those two days are Common Lit 360 specific. As I'm sure you see with those three little quotes on the side, teachers are coming to these sessions voluntarily and they are leaving feeling more empowered to use Common Lit resources um, and really excited. So to summarize the journey that I have just taken you on, the four years of our both formal and informal partnership, um, I wanted to show you this graph so you can see those numbers climbing up and up and up. But like I said before, this is not an accident. This steady increase of engagement from your district has come alongside the, the strong partnership that we're creating and the consistent support that we've already been offering your team. Um, so I'm sure you are seeing this and saying, cool, assigning lessons is all well and good. How do we know that these resources are effective? Um, and I hope that was the question you had because our my colleague Bryn is going to talk to you all about the efficacy of our program. Absolutely. I think one of the the, the pillars of our work, Amanda mentioned this earlier, we're a, we're a teacher-founded nonprofit organization. And one of the things we hold most sacred is a commitment to research. Uh, so we are constantly conducting studies, oftentimes with external evaluators and third-party evaluators, 
to, to prove and assess the efficacy and impact of our program. Uh, so in the next few slides, I'll speak about this a little bit more. There's also additional resources that uh, we can share uh, after the presentation if it'd be helpful. Um, but three of the things we're really focused on when we're doing this research is one, student performance, of course, our students showing meaningful, measurable reading gains throughout the school year. But we also focus on teacher practice and satisfaction. Uh, we embed instructional best practices into our instructional materials, especially in Comilet 360. Uh, so we are evaluating how it's helping teachers improve their practice and also making their lives easier. Uh, and then we also focus on student engagement, our students finding these resources engaging uh, and interactive. We have, through this work, uh, conducted numerous studies uh, in districts all across the country. One that we speak to on this slide here, uh, a, a great partner of ours in Blount County, Tennessee. They have been utilizing Comlet 360 since the 2019-2020 school year. They were an early adopter of our curriculum, and they found really exciting results year over year that have only further deepened their commitment to the curriculum and excitement around it. Uh, specifically, you'll see in the chart on the right, they've seen that the percentage of their students that are scoring on track or showing mastery levels on their state assessment have grown even during a period of time in which many other districts in the state were seeing those numbers dip due to the pandemic. Uh, specifically, they've seen that since 2021, that percentage of students on track or reaching mastery levels has increased by 20%. So they have more students on grade level They've seen significant growth, uh, market growth for historically underserved student populations, especially their English language learners and students with disabilities. They've also, from a teacher's perspective, identified improved collaboration and alignment across grade levels. Teachers are finding it easier with Common Lit 360 to plan with one another and support one another in their individual instruction. And they've uh, announced or they, they've reflected on how much they've benefited from the tailored professional development we've been able to provide, like some of the professional development that Monica mentioned earlier that we've begun to lead for your team. We also recently conducted research from this past school year uh, with schools across New York City. Specifically, we looked at 26 schools in New York City, 23 of whom were Title I schools, and they found a really exciting finding. They found a, that those schools overall uh, were outperforming many of their peer schools in their neighborhoods, but they also found that specifically within their buildings, the more lessons students were su submitting, the more they were interacting with Common Lit 360, the more reading growth they displayed and experienced compared to their peers. So they're also finding that the more deeply they utilize Common Lit 360, the greater those reading gains were. And with that, I'm excited to hand things over to, now we've given you the background about our partnership and also about some of the efficacy research that goes into making sure this is a really effective and impactful program. And I'm excited to turn things over to Amanda and Monica to get into the details a little bit and talk about Comlet 360, our curriculum. Thanks, Bryn. Yes, I'm really excited um, to talk more about our curriculum and really shine the core product that we think is going to be so impactful for your team. So to start, I wanna be really clear um, about the intentions of the curriculum and what we believe that um, an effective curriculum should have. So first and foremost, you can bet that Common Lit 360 is research-backed, as we've said before, um, and is full of culturally relevant units and themes that don't just accelerate students' literacy growth, but also focus on critical thinking skills and creativity and collaboration in the classroom. You're also going to see scaffolded lessons and tools to support all learners. Even though this is a grade level curriculum, we wanna make sure we are empowering teachers with choice to meet students with all needs. It's also on an easy to use and easy to use website that your team is already really comfortable with. Um, it's a really nice benefit that Common Lit is something that your teachers are already using so much and adding the curriculum into their daily practice will be really simple. And we also pride ourselves on designing the curriculum um, in a way that an English teacher would like to receive that because we ourselves are former English teachers. There's also options quickly for printing as well. So we'll show you those two options to have digital and pen to paper. Um, and then within those lessons, there's a lot of flexibility in the way that you can facilitate and still have autonomy in your classroom with your craft. And finally, just reiterating this again, we are not gonna leave you alone in this. We're not going to give you the resources and say, good luck. 
We are going to really be there for you every step of the way throughout our partnership. So to orient you to this slide, um, what you're looking at is our overview scope and sequence for our middle school units. I'll get to high school in just a moment. Um, to start, the first thing you should notice as you're looking on the slide is really compelling themes and titles of novels that students know and love and teachers love to teach. Um, we are really excited to provide a curriculum that has compelling themes and texts that students are really excited to talk about every day when they get to their class. Um, we also are looking for themes that elicit student background and experience in meaningful ways. The next thing I'd love to draw your eye to is the arrow going upwards and the arrow going to the right of the screen. This signifies that our curriculum is vertically and horizontally aligned. So what does that actually mean in practice? It means that when you walk into a classroom at a school district that is has adopted Common Lit 360, you can be sure that at the beginning of the year, no matter if it's a sixth grade classroom, a seventh grade classroom, or an eighth grade classroom, your students are working on a thematic unit and focusing on single text literary analysis. There are aligned reading and writing outcomes that um, meet grade level expectations, but follow that same vertical alignment piece. This makes it really easy for us to lead meaningful PD and give support throughout the year that feels um, really responsive to the time of year. Um, another thing I really wanna touch on is that our curriculum is not just novel based. It's not just short story based. It covers a lot. Um, your students are going to be reading really compelling novels. They're going to be reading compelling poetry um, and short stories, but they're also going to be putting their research hats on and reading really interesting nonfiction texts and producing a research paper, as well as exploring a um, contemporary question or interesting topic and producing an argument about it. This creates a really well-rounded ELA classroom by the end of the year, um, and we really think that it would be a great addition to your team's um, ELA program. Um, and then moving along to high school, you'll see a lot of the same, but there's a few things I wanna note that are different. Um, similarly to middle school, you'll see a lot of really great topics and even more exciting novels um, because with high school comes a little bit more rigor um, and wanting to really focus on reading those classic and contemporary texts um, that students are super excited to read. We also are looking to prepare students for life beyond high school. We want to prepare them for writing that cover letter, for writing that college essay, um, as well as leaving high school with a love of reading um, and having options for your teachers every step of the way. But what do these units actually look like? So the units themselves um, are comprised of five main components. And that's because at Common Lit, we believe that students should be reading, writing, discussing, and collaborating, and really refining their vocabulary um, and grammar skills in those writings every single day. We don't just believe that a good ELA curriculum centers reading and writing alone. All five of these components are really important um, every step of the way. To give you a quick visualization of that, um, we want to make sure that teachers see a really and students see a really clear progression of learning that hits on all of these main points. What you're looking at is an example of um, a layout of like pacing of a unit that we provide with our professional development for every single unit for teachers. So you're really able to see that reading and writing and discussing and practicing with your um, peers and getting that feedback happens all throughout the unit and is not isolated to one part. Um, I'm really excited to dive into the finer details of these lessons, and I'm gonna actually pass the mic over um, to Monica to do that. Thank you so much. Now I get to do my favorite thing, and it is talk about the secret sauce that makes Common Lit 360 something that teachers love, but students also find incredibly compelling and engaging. So one, the first thing I want to let you all know is that Common Lit 360 lessons are designed to uh, make teachers' lives easier. What are some things that we offer teachers uh, to, take, to take a little bit off of their plate? Number one, there is how-to guidance for best practices um, for all reading lessons, all writing lessons. Additionally, we have ready-made lesson plans with facilitation guidance. This is going to offer uh, different pathways for educators, depending on the needs of their students. We have suggestions for more structured classes, right? More uh, teacher-led 
And uh, we also have some options or some suggestions for classes that are ready for a little bit more independence and a little uh, more independent work. And finally, we have explicit, like I mentioned before, explicit support for both pacing and planning built into all of the teacher copies. I said before, and I stand by it, uh, our core texts support students uh, to engage with really compelling essential questions. So something, uh, Becca, I see your question and I promise we will address it. Something that students really love and appreciate is that our units are, um, we offer thematic units. There is an essential question for every unit and it is the lens that students get to use to, uh, as they explore every reading lesson, every writing lesson, every discussion, um, they're gonna keep coming back to that essential question as they build their way towards that, that uh, culminating task at the end of the unit. A few other things that we wanna make sure you know, um, in addition to that essential question, our texts are, we're really proud of the fact that we have texts that represent a number of diverse perspectives. We wanna make sure that students can see themselves reflected back at them in the text that they read. But we also wanna give students an opportunity to uh, experience lives and, and, and cultures and things that are different from them. Um, and finally, we one of our core beliefs in building the 360 curriculum is that all students, uh, we wanna make sure all students have access to, should be able to access that really engaging, rigorous, grade level specific materials. Um, so one thing that we are gonna offer you are uh, opportunities to extend, to challenge students who are ready for it. But we also have texts, supplemental texts that are built in to help uh, give students a little extra support, those extra at-bats to practice those foundational skills if they need them. So when it comes to engagement, um, I think I think the the proof is on the slide that you can see engaging texts. Um, it, they are engaging for students because they come from renowned authors, but they're also incredibly diverse. Common Lit 360 exposes students to great works uh, that are both classic and contemporary. In the course of one unit, students may experience a really phenomenal classic text like. Uh, the Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe. And then they might fast forward to the 21st century and read something like First Day Fly by Jason Reynolds. Um, these texts, students tell us time and time again, this is something that they really, really love about our units. I wanna take us back, I wanna pivot us back to the idea that we deeply believe that uh, our curriculum is designed for all learners. And we wanna make sure that all learners are set up for success with our curriculum. We have a few supports that are embedded on the following slides. I'm gonna show you exactly what these look like, but some of the biggies, we have background building opportunities that are intentionally created to help build background and schema for students. We have scaffolded in-text questions embedded into our reading lessons. We also have a number of accessibility tools and we have explicit vocabulary study built into our lessons. This slide is gonna show you a few examples of our accessibility features. These accessibility features can help uh, a number of different students. These are designed to help our multilingual learners, some struggling readers, and also students with disabilities. Some of these accessibility features that you see here with these little arrows, um, we have a text-to-speech feature that is enabled in all uh, student lessons. We also have the ability, so students have the ability to translate a portion or the text in its entirety in over 30 languages. And finally, we have annotation support. The really neat thing about our annotations feature is not only can uh, students highlight and take notes as they go through a text, these highlights and annotations save for students so they can refer back to it when they answer questions later. But the annotations are also accessible for teachers as well. Teachers can uh, see how their students are making their thinking visible, and they can offer feedback and commentary directly in a student's uh, lesson that way. Another core belief, you're going to hear me talk about a lot of things we believe with our curriculum. Another big one is we think that uh, learning is inherently a social act. We want to make sure that throughout our curriculum, there are opportunities for students to learn from uh, educators, those experts in the classroom, but also that there are opportunities for students to learn from one another. So what you'll notice throughout uh, each unit, throughout the curriculum, is that there are formal and informal ways for students to connect and collaborate with one another. 
Some examples are uh, the turn and talks that are built into reading lessons, and also some more formal student-led discussions that are included in every unit. Now, when it comes to uh, extension, sometimes these, these units, the topics are so compelling that teachers are teachers try to figure out, well, how can we offer more opportunities for students to dig into these ideas, to, to continue to learn? There are lots of additional learning opportunities. Some big ones that are included in every unit, uh, we have supplemental texts. These are curated to be thematically connected to the unit, um, and they are going to offer opportunities for extension and also support. Additionally, we have some curated resources that can help teachers put together book clubs and other independent learning opportunities for students. Now, if teachers are really feeling ambitious and they want to pull additional resources in addition to our units, um, they can look no further. They never have to leave our platform. They just have to take themselves over to our lesson library. In addition to the Common Lit 360 curriculum, all of your teachers have access to our lesson library where they have uh, access to over 3000 texts. These texts are age appropriate for third grade all the way up to 12th grade. And if teachers are looking for something specific to go alongside a unit, we have some really phenomenal filters they can use. Teachers can filter by a theme, a skill, a genre, or even a related novel to find additional resources. Another thing that is an unsung hero, or maybe it's a sung hero, I talk about it certainly all the time. Um, and I know I've mentioned it in uh, previous PDs with Tucson teachers, a recent uh, addition to the collection of resources we have available on CommonLint is our target lessons. Target lessons are a really phenomenal, uh, it's a phenomenal resource to use alongside the 360 curriculum because it is going to offer students skill specific practice. If teachers through using our curriculum and our assessments are recognizing that there are particular um, uh, areas of growth for students, they can take themselves over to our lesson library and find target lessons that can help give students that extra at bat or support with the particular skill or standard. Oh my gosh, speaking of scaffolding, speaking of support, I'm gonna pivot us from talking about reading to talking about writing. You guys are getting a, a quick tour of all the wonderful resources in Common Lit. So we're gonna talk about writing for just a moment. We deeply believe in the building of uh, these units that we need to teach students how to walk before we teach them how to run, right? Um, and this, this philosophy is embedded in the way we think about the arc of writing instruction in each 360 unit. We wanna make sure that we are teaching discrete foundational writing skills to students before they are expected to complete a more uh, complex formal piece of writing. Taking a look at this example on the screen, this is from sixth grade unit one. Before students are ever expected to create a beautiful multi-paragraph essay, we're gonna teach students how to break down a prompt. And we're gonna make sure that students know how to write a complete paragraph. We're gonna give them all those building blocks before they have to build the house. Now, naming the thing, um, teachers tell us all the time, writing is hard for students and it can also be hard for teachers to teach. We want to make this a little bit easier. We want to demystify the writing, the teaching of writing for you all, um, which is why every single writing lesson embedded in 360 is going to offer some really wonderful scaffolds to gradually build student capacity. Every single writing lesson is going to come with exemplar responses, really helpful visuals that students can continue to refer back to, graphic organizers to help them stay organized with their writing, and finally, they get multiple targeted practice opportunities. In other words, lots of informal opportunities to write before they ever have to submit a formal piece of writing for feedback from a teacher. Now, we are huge fans of the digital platform. We're huge fans of the fact that all of our reading lessons and writing lessons can be digitally assigned to students, which is great if you want, if teachers want to make sure that all of their data is living in one place. With that being said, we also recognize the power of students being able to complete writing tasks with a pen and paper, right? Which is why we really easily, we make it really easy for you all to uh, create a PDF, a printed copy of every reading lesson and every writing lesson. So a printed uh, copy is available for all of, our, all of those lessons. 
Now I am just about wrapping up. Can you believe it? I still have more things to talk about with our units. Um, like Amanda said before, we are so proud of the foundation of our units, right? The reading and writing components, but that's not all we have to offer. We really do believe that uh, to make your students stronger readers, writers, and thinkers, we need to tackle literacy from all angles. A big part of that is making sure students are working on their vocab and grammar throughout a unit. One way that we do that is by offering students the opportunity to learn 10 new vocabulary words for every single unit. These are high leverage vocabulary words, meaning that they are going to see those words throughout the reading lessons that they do, and they're going to be expected to apply those words in the writing lessons that they complete. In addition to the, the scaffolded practice opportunities, teachers are also going to have access to vocabulary quizzes, two vocabulary quizzes per unit to monitor student progress. And finally, finally, I save one of my favorite things for last. Um, don't sleep on this part of our curriculum. This is the thing that brings so, so many students, so many teachers, so much joy. It's our discussion lessons and our related media explorations. These are the opportunities that students have to make those text to world connections. Our discussion lessons and related media exploration include authentic opportunities to explore real world topics. These are gonna be thoughtfully embedded throughout the unit. Um, to help deepen students' background knowledge, build their schema. And they're gonna come in high, um, high interest multimedia. Uh, uh, they're just gonna come in a lot of different ways, right? Sometimes it's gonna be a video, sometimes it's gonna be a graph. Um, and like we said before, we wanna make sure students have lots of opportunities to connect, to collaborate and learn with one another. So all of these will also come with built-in questions to foster collaboration. My goodness, are you all tired? That's so many, so many things are happening there. Is the question on your mind, how can we make sure that, uh, how can we progress monitor through all of these different components? I'm sure that's your question, right? Well, good news, Brennan's gonna tell you all about progress monitoring through CommonLit. Awesome, awesome. So I'm excited to chat a little bit about the assessments that are available with our program. So one of the things, uh, one of the elements of our program that we're very committed to is making sure that any opportunities we provide for assessment are in service of instruction. So these uh, moments where teachers are stopping with their students and assessing those skills are then being used to inform how they're teaching moving forward. There are also different layers to the assessment that we provide. So throughout an entire school year on CommonLit, there will be ample opportunities for formative assessment. After completing one of the lessons, for instance, the reading lessons that Monica described, there'll be opportunities for teachers to stop and check in with students and see how they're performing and how they're growing, uh, whether they're understanding the material they're interacting with. But there are also these opportunities through our unit skills assessments and our assessment series benchmark assessments that I'll speak about in a moment for teachers to step back at regular intervals throughout the year and identify if there are any additional needs in their classroom. The first of these opportunities is our common lit assessment series. This was referenced earlier. We mentioned that these uh, assessments are already being heavily used so far this school year in the district. These are high quality benchmark assessments. There's a pre-assessment designed to be assigned towards the beginning of the school year, a mid-year assessment, and then a post-assessment that's designed to be assigned at the end of the school year. Each of these is designed to be completed in roughly one class period, and each includes three reading passages and 25 to 35 multiple choice questions. These are designed to provide very actionable data. You'll he hear me mention actionable several times. That's something we're very committed to. So this is going to give teachers an opportunity to view standards-based performance. So how are those students performing on the Arizona State standards? Are there specific skills that students are struggling with? That's also going to give teachers an opportunity to identify uh, how students in their classroom are performing compared to their grade level peers in their district, but also nationally. So you can identify if there are certain students in the classroom that might benefit from additional tailored support or extension opportunities. Then with our unit skills assessments, we provide two flexible assessments with each unit. These are directly aligned to the topics and the focus skills that students are working on and reflecting on throughout each unit. 
So these are an opportunity. They include both multiple choice and short answer questions. They're an opportunity for teachers to check in with students during or oftentimes at the very end of the unit to see how well they've understood and grown in terms of those skills they've been practicing throughout the unit. They also, similar to our assessment series assessments, are providing very easy to read actionable data that is both standards-based and in terms of overall performance. So these are going to provide a more regular checkpoint for teachers throughout the school year to see how their students are performing. And then as Monica mentioned earlier, there's so many great opportunities in our lesson library, in our supplemental texts that go along with each unit, as well as with those target lessons that I particularly love for teachers to then intervene and further support their students. With that, I want to transition to uh, talking about the rollout of Common Let 360. We've talked quite a bit about our curriculum. We've also touched on the assessments that go alongside and really work in tandem with that curriculum. And Amanda will take it away here to talk about what it would look like to continue our partnership and roll out Common Let 360 more deeply in Tucson Unified. Thanks, Bryn. Yeah, I'm really excited to dive in um, a little bit deeper. As a reminder, you know and love our engaging content, and we have just talked about our assessments and data. And now I want to focus a little bit more on the professional learning and premium support we can offer your district if we do roll out Common Lit 360 with you all. At the core of our partnership is that high touch account management to support you every step of the way. Y'all have the privilege of having Monica help you do that this year and had the privilege of Sasha before that. Um, and what's really great about having an account manager from Commonlit is that we get to know you really intimately. We wanna make sure that we know your goals and your needs. Um, so we're able to plan really effective technical setup. We're able to collaborate on an instructional implementation plan that might fit the needs of different schools, um, as well as provide customized professional development. Before we get into implementation and PD, we know we need to set teachers up for success for the tech. They have to log in every day and be confident that their lessons are going to be there, that their students can get right to work, and there's not any confusion, which is why I'm really excited to say that we've already integrated with Canvas with your district. Um, everything is going to live in one place for your teachers um, and your students. Your assessments, your curriculum, even you know being able to log in and complete a lesson right on Canvas. Um, Everything about this integration makes teachers' lives easier, which is most important to us, um, and taking that, that stress of planning um, and facilitation out of it, the equation. So we continue to support you with that. And then once everyone is all set up for the school year, then we can get into the really great part, which is personalized um, training. We are able to do this in person or virtually, um, really depending on the needs of your schools um, at the time of year, everything can kind of vary there. Um, but I would love to dive in a little bit deeper to the types of professional development we can offer. Um, we are going to have tons of different session options, and I'm actually going to dive in and show you them. So first and foremost, foremost you'll notice that we have for Common Lit 360 foundational sessions and advanced sessions. What I love about this in particular for Tucson is that we know that there are some schools that are already well into using Common Lit 360, but there might be some other campuses that are newer to it. That way we can already differentiate the types of trainings that we're offering um, to campuses based on where they're at comfort wise with the curriculum. And within each, there are tons of different choices. Starting with foundations, thinking about what that year one implementation in earnest would look like. We're gonna make sure that teachers have all of the key lesson types, all of the key tools for them totally laid out. We're also gonna make sure that leaders in schools and across the district have their toolkit to be able to support teachers trying out this curriculum for the first time. And we're also gonna focus our professional learning on best practices to, for a um, really effective facilitation of reading lessons, writing lessons, and then of course, our related media discussion and vocabulary lessons. Each session, um, has gotten amazing feedback from all of our partners. And we are really excited to be able to lead these throughout the school year for teams. Digging a little bit deeper into our advanced sessions, this is when routines are being set. Everyone kind of knows what's expected of them. Teachers are super comfortable, students are comfortable um, and know what's expected of them. And we are able to take that a level deeper with both teachers and leaders. I'll let you guys take a quick 
browse some of the topics here, but Sasha's also put the menu in the chat as well for you guys to browse on your own time. Again, your account specialist will be there with you to help you plan all of these professional development sessions. It's something that we've already gotten to do with your team. Um, so we'd be excited to continue, continue to deepen that effort within the district. Beyond these sessions where we get everyone together in Zoom, on Zoom or in a big room together, there are also opportunities for continued professional learnings in the moment. Um, so with our partnership, you're going to get access to unit specific modules that really support the teacher for specific planning for the particular unit they are working on. What I love about this is that they feel like not just helpful for pacing, but also helpful for those aha moments for students. We are going to lay it out perfectly for you of when someone is going to get that part in the story that's really exciting or suspenseful um, or that moment for students to really dive deep in their own personal experience and connecting to that essential question. And then in addition to that, we also have lesson level professional learning videos, quick two to three minute videos that give you all the top beats of the lesson you're about to teach to help you feel prepared for your day. Um, and there's also a whole menu of on-demand trainings that you can access at any time um, if you have um, multilingual learners, if you are excited to dive into the data from your pre-assessment, but aren't sure where to start, all of those will live right on your Common Lit account. So I really am excited to work together to build upon the strong foundation of our current partnership and be able to provide you all with a curriculum assessment and professional learning plan that provides just the best for your teachers and for your students. Um, so with that, we are going to transition to Q&A. Um, you'll see a great picture of our entire team, um, as well as a few quotes that we just couldn't uh, resist sharing from our current partners too. So Heidi and Jacqueline, we'd be excited to gather some questions. I know that we had one from Becca, but if there's, if there's any that you have, Heidi, to start, let me know. Let's go ahead and start with Becca's and then we can just open it up to Free questions. Awesome. Okay. So I am going to pop back to our <clears throat> open sequence. Um, and Monica, I'd love to hear how you would recommend. Um, Becca asked if we can if we can use the units out of order, what would you recommend? That's a really good question. So Becca, one thing uh, that we want to let you know is that our units have been thoughtfully designed to gradually build the rigor for uh, students as the year goes on. So one consideration you want to take in, in mind before you mix and mingle is just, just know that if you start with uh, a unit six rather than a unit one, for example, um, it could potentially be quite challenging for students. With that in mind, um, another consideration I want to let you know is our unit, our unit ones have all been really thoughtfully designed to help students uh, content wise. It's gonna be having students think about that transition at the beginning of the year. Uh, what does it mean to change and grow, to belong in a community, that sort of thing. Um, with that in mind, every district has different pacing needs. And one of the things your account specialist can do is to strategize with you all. Uh, if there are some pacing needs, we will prioritize, we'll talk to you all about what your priorities are and we can be strategic about the uh, scope and sequence of what a year, um, what the curriculum would look like for Tucson. Thanks, Monica. So any other questions y'all have, we are eager to answer. And feel free to share in the chat or unmute. Yes. We're happy to answer them aloud. I apologize if I miss this, but I, I know this has come up in, in other um, presentations. Um, when you were showing the writing, I didn't catch, um, are there um, checkers for um, plagiarism? Did you talk about that already? Did I miss it? Um, no, we didn't actually cover that. So um, I can take this question and then folks feel free to, to fill in. 
Um, so we don't have anything integrated in our exact site to be able to do that. But what's really nice about Commonlit is it's not an app. It's not a separate textbook. It's just a website. So if there are plugins that you are able to use or you want students to submit their final essay, let's say through Turnitin, it's very easy for them to do that. Bryn, Sasha, anything else to share there? Yeah, no, I, I think I think that covers it well. Just Heidi, just to, to reiterate, we don't have a like a plagiarism checker built into our program. As Amanda noted, it's easy to use it along, use a, another program that the district prefers or is identified alongside Commonlet, um, but that's not something that is built into our program. One, one final little thing that is worth mentioning, um, the copy and paste feature is disabled. Um, so students would not be able to pull something from another site to copy and paste it into um, a writing task on Commonlet. So that's a, a little deterrent that's built into our platform. I know this is a lot of information to digest, but again, happy to answer anything or show anything um, that folks felt like we're missing. Uh, this is Pamela. Could, Hi, could Pamela. you, I, um, could you explain um, what, with the the highlighting? Sorry, with the read aloud, uh, the text to speech. Um, do you have word by word uh, highlighting as that happens? It's actually paragraph by paragraph. Um, so the reason that we do that is because our read aloud works with all types of text. So if it were word by word, it would actually um, mess up the flow of a poem often or a speech. So we've chosen to do paragraph by paragraph for that reason. Um, but students are able to adjust the speed and also play back that paragraph really easily. Thank you for the question. Hi, Amanda. I have a quick question. I was typing it in, but I rather it was becoming too lengthy. <laughs> a couple of questions regarding your benchmark. Number one, are they based on units and how often, if that's the case? And I don't remember hearing about formatives along the way as far as what that assessment might look like. <clears throat> Would you mind expanding on that, please? Sure. And, thing, and do you integrate with Canvas? Yes. Okay. Yes, absolutely. I'll start with the, the last one. Uh, thank you so much. We do integrate with Canvas. Um, so our program is fully integrated with Canvas. And we've actually, through our current partnership with the district, already set up that Canvas integration for the team. So uh, we've already worked with your tech department to get that set up and, and teachers in the process of using it and are finding success there. Specifically, I appreciate the question around the forms of assessment. Uh, that we offer. So there are three layers of assessments we offer that are a part of our Commonlet program. Uh, if we're thinking at the most formative level, the most local level day-to-day -day instruction, our Commonlet 360 units come with uh, exit tickets, formative assessments throughout the unit. Uh, there are opportunities for students to submit their responses to, to multiple choice and short answer questions as they're completing those reading and writing lessons, and then teachers are able to view and interact with that data. But then it believed you were asking, it sounded like you were asking questions around unit-based assessments. Those are going to come from our unit skills assessments. So we have unit skills assessments. There's two per unit. Those are going to include both multiple choice and short answer questions. They're meant, to, they're designed to be uh, utilized in one class period or less. Those are going to be directly aligned to the unit topics and perhaps more importantly, the focus skills of that unit that teachers and students are walking through. Uh, so that is going to be a really important and valuable opportunity for teachers to assess student learning in that unit. And then those benchmark assessments, those assessment series assessments we offer, those are three times a year. So those are a broader set of benchmark assessments. They're assessing the, the variety of skills that students are practicing and learning throughout the year. Does that answer your question? It does. Are the units, about how many weeks are the units? Absolutely. The, the units, we, we have it labeled for teachers on the site because it does vary slightly, but it's generally between six and nine weeks of instruction for each unit. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely.
thank you for the questions. Yeah, and just to underscore that just a quick bit, because I realized that this might've been hard to see in the screenshot. I'm logged in as a teacher with Common Lit 360 right now. Um, and just so you can see, so we'll close that loop, the unit skills assessments are embedded right in the unit. So they're able to see that right there. And then in the unit over uh, the lessons and materials, you'll see a suggested pacing next to each lesson. So you make it really clear for teachers for what to expect. We know things happen in the classroom and things can change in the day to day, but we do provide um, that level of specificity with pacing. Thank you for the questions. This is Pamela. Going back to your accessibility features, could you talk about your text resizing and your, your chunking or guided reading modes? Yeah. Monica, do you want me to take it, Sasha? You know, I always love Pamela. I would be happy to talk about guided reading mode. Folks, guided reading mode is a feature um, that teachers can enable for any reading lesson. And what it does is chunk a text into uh, more smaller, more manageable pieces. It's going to literally blur out everything below a guided reading question. The purpose of this, it's going to stop, it's going to encourage students to slow down while they are reading. And they're going to have to answer a comprehension question or a text related question before they move on. A really neat thing about this is that uh, teachers are able to track how many at-bats it's going to take for students to correctly answer one of those guided reading questions. Um, Pamela also asked about um, text sizing. Is that right? Monica, I'm going to go into a lesson. So let me just actually show you while you're yeah. talking. Yes. <laughs> so I'm and then while you're there, will you uh, show the, I will. <laughs> yep, the ability to make it bigger? Yes. So first and foremost, let's do the font size. So you'll see here that you have the option medium, large, or extra large. And this does not include a student having to zoom in or out on their browser. It's really easy. Um, and then for guiding questions, the guiding reading mode you're talking about, you'll see that there is a question here that teachers can review before they assign it. But if I pop into student preview mode, I'm actually able to see that blurring. So that moment for the students to stop and they have to respond to the question correctly before moving on. And what I love about this also underscoring is that it provides them the correct answer. And this is also an optional tool to use um, in these extension lessons in the library. One additional piece that I want to add that I think kind of ties nicely to your question, Heidi, in the chat about print is also that this resizing of the text, like deciding if the text is going to be a little bit large or a little bit smaller for students, that can also happen with the digital downloads that teachers have access to for their lessons as well. So they can make sure they're meeting their students' needs both digitally, but also in print if need be. Just to quickly speak through, I appreciate all the questions in the chat. I want to get to a few of them quickly, especially while we have the, the screen shared still to the website. Uh, the, the question here, is there a translation option to Spanish or other languages? Absolutely, yes, there is. So there is uh, the default is Spanish, but we have translation into over 35 different languages. You can see Amanda showing that on the screen here now. So for your English language learners, uh, they will be able to select the language they would like to see the translation for. And then as Amanda is showing on the screen here, there'll be the option on the side panel of the screen for students to see that translated text next to the text in English. Uh, so this is, this is a really valuable tool that's available for all of our lessons. And then also to the question around uh, that Pamela had around auto grading, we do automatically score all multiple choice questions for teachers. So all of the scoring of those multiple choice questions is done automatically. So they have immediate access to their results. There was also a question around intervention and enrichment options. I think if, if Monica, if you don't mind, I'll turn it over to you to speak into that. I'd love to love to just highlight some of the intervention and enrichment opportunities that come with our Commonwealth 360 units. I would, I want to be mindful of time. Heidi, do we have a stop time or can I? Uh, you still have uh, like 10 minutes. Phenomenal. Well, here I go. So, right, Jackie, am I, I am right on that, right? That'll give us a five minute transition. Perfect. Yeah, I'd like correct. to ask a question when, when you're done though. Okay, just before I'd like to ask a question when you're finished. Thank you, Monica. Sounds good. Um, Y'all, when it comes to intervention options, um, and, and scaffolding opportunities. So 
one of the things that I, uh, I know we threw a lot of content out at you, but so Amanda has, she's screen sharing right now. And if you go to additional materials, what you're going to see is an opportunity. So it says supplemental text and lessons. This is one really great place. It's already built into every unit. We are gonna have some curated resources here for you all. It's gonna be thematically connected to your unit. And there will be um, some text here that are more challenging. It's gonna give students that extra extension if they need it. But there will also be texts that are curated. They are designed to be a little bit below the assigned grade level. And that is designed to help support students if they need some additional practice with um, specific skills. If you wanna take it a step further, we also have our target lessons. Our target lessons are those skill specific lessons that are living in our um, common lit library. And this is really great, especially once your teachers get a little bit deeper with their data tracking using the assessment series. So they can really isolate specific skills or standards that teacher that students need a little extra support with. Um, and what you will find here is a wide range, a wide array of lessons that will be specific to a skill. It's going to explicitly teach it for students and give them lots of at bats for practicing that. Um, those are the first few that come to mind. Anybody, Sasha Brin, anything else that we're lifting up? The only other one that comes to mind for me is if we're when we're back on the unit page, thinking specifically about like enrichment and extension, um, those independent reading resources I know are also a huge hit with partners for students that are ready to take on that like more independent reading and learning themselves. We provide teachers with the opportunity and the supports to successfully set up a strong reading culture in their classroom and to help support students with engaging with the text, also providing like recommendations of the text that they could use so that they're still thematically connected to um, the overall unit and skills that students are working on as well. All right, I know being mindful of time while we're here, I'm gonna quickly, did we touch on print? I noticed that that was a question that we might've missed and it was yours, Heidi. Um, what's amazing is that every single Common Lit 360 lesson has the option to be printed. Um, you can always find that, I'm in an assignment right now um, do people really change? And you'll notice that download materials is up at the top. And what I absolutely love about our lessons is that we don't lose any of the really important moments when we download it, where it's not just downloading the text and there's no questions, there's no footnotes, nothing. Everything is there. So all of those during reading questions we just showed you that students have to work through to get through the text, they're right there on the side. So you're able to facilitate the lesson pen to paper. Does that answer your question? Awesome. And and then I'm also seeing, Alyssa, thank you so much uh, for your question here. And also, uh, I'm, I'm so glad to hear that you found Conlet to be a really useful resource. Uh, and ha importantly, is taking some of the stress and planning off of you so you can focus on your students and meeting their individual needs in the classroom. To your question around grammar activities, uh, it's a great one. We do have we do include grammar activities throughout each of the units throughout the school year. There are multiple touch points for students to practice those discrete grammar and convention skills. As you noted, some of them are labeled as optional, but I'm a big fan of them. I definitely recommend utilizing those with your students. Um, those are something that I, I think can really, they really tie in nicely with the rest of the unit and can, it can improve uh, student writing ability. Uh, there are not other distinct grammar activities on CommonLit beyond those that are included in those units, but those those are a great resource to start. Anything else that the team would add there? No, I think you hit it. I know Camille had a question, and then I promise Pamela I'll get to yours. Okay, thank you. So you 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 really focused on targeted lessons in literature, you know, in helping students uh, extend their exposure through enrichment and extension activities. So I'm thinking about in relation to writing and do you have a system in place that mirrors that kind of structure so that students, they can, we want them to get to proficiency. So what does that look like? What kind of frameworks do you have? Mechanisms in those frameworks. And then once they get to proficiency, what does it look like after that? Absolutely. That's a wonderful question. Monica, do you want me to take this one or do you want to speak into it? Do you want to start it off and I can well, jump I'll in? Start you off, Sasha, absolutely also can join in. Um, first and foremost, the answer is yes. 
Um, we have a really specific approach to writing where we are scaffolding the skills for students. I am going to bring us back because there's a lot of content. I'm going to bring us back to that slide where we lay out a specific units, different lessons. What you'll notice here is it starts at the most foundational level, breaking down a prompt. What is that question asking? And it builds throughout the first unit to finally planning a literary analysis essay and actually peer reviewing it with your partner. Um, throughout the course of the year, students are increasing their rigor with writing, but also have different writing outcomes, right? They're going to write a research paper. They're going to write an argumentative essay. They're going to write multiple literary analysis essays. Um, we also have supportive rubrics as well as writing professional development to guide teachers to set the bar for their students of what grade level instruction, what grade level writing looks like. Um, we help students get there and we hope they get there quickly. And then beyond that, we slowly release more independent work. So there's a little bit less of the practice this skill in a short, isolated way. And then, right, we are actually releasing them to do more independent writing by the end of the year. Curious if I'm missing anything from the team. One tiny thing to add is that thinking about our high flyers, folks that hit that proficiency like really early on within the unit, many of our units also come with additional unit writing options that teachers can leverage to help extend that practice as, as well in a really meaningful way too. So teachers have like that kind of baseline, the support that they need to get students to the level that they want them to be at. And then for our students that need to be pushed beyond that, we also make sure that we have resources, not just for reading, but also for writing to help give them that space in that practice as well. Did I answer your question? Awesome. All right, so Pamela, I'm gonna get right to you. Give me one second. Um, one second. So here, so I think um, this will be our last question. Okay. I know we got to wrap it up really quick. I'll speak really <laughs> okay. fast. I'm from New Jersey, so that should work. <laughs> okay. So the first, uh, the first thing I'll say is there are options for workbooks. So having like student consumables that you can order, there are two options and we want to be really transparent. The first is included with the package and the cost proposal that you currently have, um, is where you can share the files with you all collated. Okay. There's really easy, you know, connections to the unit, students know exactly where they are, um, but you can make the decision to print them with a partner at your district. If you have a publishing house that you utilize, you have a budget for this. If certain schools, buildings need it, we are not going to presume that you need it for every school or every student. And then the second option is actually picking it over to us, where if this is something you're interested in and you want us to, to take that on and find our own, you know, use our partner, um, we can coordinate with that with you for an additional price. As a reminder, teachers can individually print. That is like not an extra cost by any means. Um, they can do that on their own. Um, but in terms of large scale student consumables, that's what it would be. Um, I know we're at time. I just wanted to um, thank you guys so, so much for giving us the time. I know that you've been sitting through a few of these and have one more to go. Um, and it's I'm really appreciative of all the questions and the engagement. Um, and Elisa, Alyssa, thank you so much again for the feedback. Um, it's really great to hear from an educator using it.